On, we want to bring you the facts, not fear about the coronavirus. And a new study from UC San Diego Health finds loss of smell and taste as a validated COVID-19 symptom in patients with high recovery rate. Joining us on the phone to share more on this new study is Dr. Carol Yan from UC San Diego Health. Dr. Yan, thanks so much for being here, and thank you for everything you guys are doing there. Thank you very much for having me. So this study was just published. We're talking April 12th here. Based on this study, if a person has smell and taste loss, they are 10 times more likely to have COVID-19 infection. I mean, how does this help uh, if we know this information? Yeah, no, it's, it's really um, interesting findings that we thought to ourselves. Uh, what we're seeing is that um, in this patient population of otherwise fairly mild symptoms um, who come in with fevers and cold-like symptoms and some flu-like symptoms, that the people who have smell and taste loss are a much higher likelihood of being COVID positive compared to those who don't have it. So it potentially might be a good initial screening test um, even for, you know, oneself to think, you know, do I have a significant loss of smell and taste? Would I be someone who might consider quarantining myself and calling my health care provider? Look, I have allergies. You know, sometimes things will taste a little differently to me when I, you know, when I have allergy season starts. But you're talking about something different here. Like you, you, you're having a tough time smelling and tasting things altogether. Exactly, yeah, and especially with the spring season and allergies uh, being very prominent, people with allergies often have some smell and taste loss as it is, but that's more of a gradual, long-term thing. We're talking like an acute, completely profound smell and taste loss was what we've been seeing. So people who can smell and taste completely normally, and then the next day they realize everything's gone. Um, and one way that, you know, people have been mentioning that they can check is, you know, we've been using hand sanitizers so regularly and they notice they can't smell the alcohol or smell the cooking. Um, and that's really um, insightful comments that I've had. What are other things, household products that someone, you know, would be a good test for them to test out their sniffer? Yeah, no, great question. Um, things around the house, um, fruits are really good, lemons, um, coffee is a very strong uh, odorant sure. and then if you have any really essential oils laying around the house um, it's not only a good test to see if you potentially have smell loss but if we know that essential oils and just the act of practicing smelling them uh, every day can actually help recover your sense of smell as well so you, we do encourage people to do that if they have lost their sense of smell can you break down this study a little bit uh, you know we've we hear about some of these studies that sometimes have a very low patient count, but we're talking about quite a few patients you guys looked at to come to this decision here. Yeah, so um, we looked at essentially uh, through the month of March, um, pretty much all comers who thought they may have concern for uh, symptoms of COVID-19. So that was about almost 1,500 patients who came through uh, UC San Diego. And of those, um, just over 100 ended up being positive for the coronavirus, um, and the rest were negative. So we looked at all of their clinical characteristics and kind of their symptoms, and then we reached out to all of them. Um, our study response rate was definitely higher in the people who had uh, COVID-19 um, positive tests. I think these people were very motivated to help out in the study, and we really greatly appreciate it. Um, and so we had captured 59 patients who had COVID-19 positive test mm. results and um, of 200 patients who were COVID-19 negative. Um, they all really had very similar symptoms, um, except um, incidentally the high smell and taste loss was seen much more commonly in the COVID-19 positive patients and sore throat on the other hand was actually seen much more commonly in the COVID-19 negative patients. Interesting. That was kind of something that we weren't expecting. And doctor, real quick, we should just mention uh, things kind of go back to normal quickly, right? When you're, when you're on the mend. Yeah, so this is very interesting and um, fortunate is that we think that this might be a different kind of loss compared to other post-infectious smell losses. One is it's much more common, but also um, people tend to respond, you know, um, and recover, fortunately, within a few weeks. So most people did say that they've got some kind of recovery within a couple of weeks, which is, which is great to hear. Doctor, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. That's going to help a lot of people figure out whether, in fact, they, they, they do or do not have this because 
We don't want a lot of people going to the hospital right now if they're not uh, checking off all the boxes on the symptoms. So thanks for that, Dr. Yan. Appreciate your time and everything you're doing there. Thank you very much for having me and stay safe. All right, you as well. Stay healthy. And we know.